A common question people have as they're preparing for retirement is how much can we withdraw out of our portfolio so that we can spend it all down to zero and not run out of money in retirement. And so in today's video, I wanna explore that idea uh, by looking at withdrawal rates and also looking at Monte Carlo analysis to see you know, how much can we actually withdraw. The other thing that we wanna take into consideration that a lot of people don't think about are taxes. So in the initial uh, strategy, we'll look at a 6% withdrawal rate, a 5% withdrawal rate, and a 4% withdrawal rate. But then we'll also incorporate taxes into those withdrawal rates to see how sustainable it actually is. Um, so if your money's in something like an IRA or a 401k, we're taking into consideration the tax implications of taking those portfolio withdrawals. Um, we're going to do this inside the Retirement Budget Calculator. Everybody has access to this. Just go to retirementbudgetcalculator.com if you want to try it on your own situation. But let's dive in and we'll look at how this works out. So in this um, initial hypothetical scenario, I've got John and Nancy. They're both 67 years old. We're going to say they just have one account. It's a million dollars. And currently, we'll say it's in a brokerage account. So And so that, that way, there creates no additional ongoing taxes. Now, in reality, you're probably going to have dividends, interest, and long-term or long-term and short-term capital gains. But for the sake of this analysis, we're going to assume that brokerage account, um, all the money's coming out, and there's no additional taxes as you're taking withdrawals. Um, we're going to start out with a 6% withdrawal rate. So they're going to need $10,000 a month as an expense, $120,000 a year. Um, again, we're going to be estimating taxes. The only income they have is Social Security, and because that's the only income, none of it is taxable to them. And then that gets us to the retirement optimizer. So what you can see here, John and Nancy are both 67 years old. They each have $30,000 a year of, of uh, Social Security income and their expenses are $120,000 a year. So that means they have this much income coming in from Social Security, they're gonna to have to take a, a portfolio withdrawal of $60,000. And remember, we're saying that they have a million dollars to um, withdraw from, so that $60,000 from a million dollars gives them a withdrawal rate that first year of 6.1%. And in our baseline scenario, we're only gonna assume a 4% growth rate to be really conservative. And then we'll also look at Monte Carlo using historical rates of return for the S&P 500 and intermediate term bonds to see how long their money lasts. So you can see with a 6% withdrawal rate, if they're just earning 4% per year, we get them down to age 85 when all of their resources have been depleted down to zero. And that's assuming no taxes. Now we put their life expectancy at age 97, just so that we can model a 30 year retirement. But of course you can um, modify and change life expectancy over here in the timeline strategy, if you're gonna be doing this for your own situation. Um, now let's go to the next level and say, okay, instead of just using a constant 4% growth rate on their money every year, let's go and look at Monte Carlo. And what we're doing in Monte Carlo is we're using a 60% stock, 40% bond portfolio. Um, we're assuming that that was based on the S&P 500 index and intermediate term treasuries. And we're using historical data from 1978 through 2024. And then we're running a thousand different simulations, a thousand different futures of those returns to try to understand what the probability of success is. You can see their retirement confidence score is 77%. So what that means is that when we ran those thousand different scenarios using that historical return sequence on this type of a portfolio and assuming that portfolio is being rebalanced every year, 77% of the time they were successful, 23% of the time their plan failed. And you can see that data more clearly down here. So the 10th percentile is the pessimistic, the 90th percentile is the most optimistic in terms of how those returns played out over time. So you can see in the more pessimistic scenario, they end up depleting all their resources down basically at age 90, they've, they've spent everything. In the more optimistic scenario, they, they get all the way out to age 97 with almost $13 million remaining in the portfolio. The 50th percentile means that 50% um, of the scenarios did better and 50% did worse and that they end up with $3 million. So again, our baseline scenario, just a constant 4% growth rate, no taxes on a 6% withdrawal rate, they end up running out of money at age 84. Using the pessimistic Monte Carlo, they get all the way out to age 89. 
using the 50th percentile they get all the way to 97 with still three million dollars remaining using those historical rates of return instead of assuming all of that money is in a tax uh, tax an account that's not being taxed let's look and see what happens if we change the account type from a brokerage account to a traditional IRA now we're going to say all that money is taxed on the way out we go down to the retirement optimizer and the future view and so you can see now in this scenario they only make it to age 82 because now they've estimated taxes that they're going to have to pay so they still have hundred and twenty thousand dollars of expenses but now their withdrawal rate actually increases to 7.2 percent because we're having to account for the taxes so again one of the things that makes the retirement budget calculator unique is that we are making this a expense driven retirement plan so your expenses determine how much your portfolio withdrawals are and then we're also taking into consideration the tax implications of that but in their case we're saying they have hundred and twenty thousand ten thousand dollars a month that they need to spend on expenses so now we come over to the monte carlo analysis and their retirement confidence score has dropped down to 54 percent and you can see um, the 10th percentile they end up with 111,000 at age 83 depleted their portfolios at uh, basically 84. Um, under the more optimistic scenario they end with 3.4 million and the 50th percentile they end up with a balance of $540,000 when we're taking taxes into consideration. So that is a much lower retirement confidence score. Um, we'd like that to be at least 70%, preferably 80%. I mean, in a, in a best case scenario, we're at 100%. It's going to help reduce our concerns that much more if we have a retirement confidence score of 100%. But you can see they're at 54% making those assumptions. Now, remember, that's based on a 6% withdrawal rate, meaning that they need $120,000 a year um, but when you take into consideration taxes, it increases that portfolio withdrawal rate from 6% to 7%. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to adjust the budget. Now they only need $9,166 per month. So we want to look at what happens if they have a 5% withdrawal rate. Let's come back up here. And again, we'll assume that all this money, in this case, we'll just say that they have a Roth IRA. So none of that um, none of those portfolio withdrawals are being taxed. It's all coming out tax free. And you can see now they have a $60,000 of income from Social Security, expenses $109,000, means their portfolio withdrawals are $50,000. That gives them a 5.1% withdrawal rate. And with their money only growing at 4% per year, um, we get them down to age 89 before their money's depleted. So we don't make it all the way to age 97. Then when we run the Monte Carlo analysis, uh, they have a retirement confidence score of 92%, assuming that 60% stock, 40% bond portfolio. So you can see the 10th percentile gets them all the way to uh, age 97, 566,000. 50th percentile, 6.1 million. And the most optimistic um, return sequence provided 18 million. Now, if let's say you want to run this again, you can rerun the Monte Carlo analysis and rerun those thousand iterations. Now they have a retirement score of 92. And um, you can see how the numbers change. You can change the portfolio. So maybe you want to say, well, what if we were more aggressive? We used 70% stock, 30% bonds. And you can see the impact that that has. Um, and then you could also say, what if we want to be more conservative and have a 50% stock, 50% bond mix um, running a thousand iterations? What does that do to the outcomes? And in all these situations, we, they still end up with a retirement confidence score of 91 when all those portfolio withdrawals are coming out of a Roth IRA that's already been taxed. But like before, we also want to say, well, what if we're not so lucky to have all of our money in a Roth? What if it's all in a traditional IRA? So now that's going to increase our withdrawal rate because we have to account for taxes. So you can see that here. Um, instead of just needing $50,000, now we're needing $57,000 when we're taking estimated taxes into account. That ends up being a 5.9% withdrawal rate when we're uh, also including taxes. With a constant 4% withdrawal, we get them down to age 85. And with our Monte Carlo analysis um, using a, let's go back to our 60% stock, 40% bond portfolio, 
we end up with a retirement confidence score still pretty good, 81%. So about 19% of the time, 20% of the time, we're going to have to make some adjustments as they transition through retirement if everything's not, if all of the returns aren't working as well as we would hope, especially if they end up with a bad sequence of returns right at the onset of retirement. So you can see um, pessimistic, they run out of money at 90. Optimistic, they die with $4 million. Middle of the road, they end up with $1.8 million. And then, of course, we'll do one more scenario and we'll say, what if they just spend 4% uh, uh, per year out of their portfolio? Change this expense to $8,333 per month. We'll change the asset back to a Roth IRA account. And then we'll look at the retirement optimizer. So when there's no taxes involved, you can see um, with a 4% return, 4% withdrawal, we get them all the way down to age 95. Um, when we run the Monte Carlo, we have a retirement confidence score of 98% using the 60-40 stock bond portfolio. Uh, you can kind of see where things end up. And if we were to go even maybe more conservative with a 50-50 stock bond portfolio, um, we get them to a uh, retirement confidence score of 99% with this particular thousand iterations that have been run. And so you can see 4% looks like the safe withdrawal rate. And that's where a lot of this data comes from. This historical work that has been done says that a 4% withdrawal rate is gives us the high, highest probability of not depleting the resources over your retirement. Um, when you take taxes into consideration, so let's come back up here one more time and change our asset type from Roth IRA to traditional IRA. Uh, because we're now having to account for taxes, it increases the withdrawals that are going to be needed. Um, you can see that here. So we, our expenses are still 100000 We have $60,000, but now we have an additional $4,700 of taxes that need to be accounted for. That gets us a 4.5% withdrawal rate. Assuming a 4% constant growth rate, we get out to age 90. Um, assuming the Monte Carlo analysis with a 60% stock, 40% bond uh, portfolio, we have a 95% retirement confidence score. And we can look at the 10th percentile, the 50th percentile, and the 90th percentile to understand you know, how do not just portfolio withdrawals, but taxes play into the probability of us making it throughout all of retirement without running out of money in retirement. Anyways, I hope you found this helpful. Again, you can go to the retirement budget calculator if you want to run these scenarios for yourself and just get some idea for what's the maximum amount of money you can spend without running out of money in retirement. Thanks so much.